How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Donald Trump's son-in-law and White House senior advisor, Jared Kushner, making some quote-unquote controversial comments about the black community that some see as racist. Now, before we go down that rabbit hole, let's roll the clip. In this clip, you'll see what Jared Kushner said outside of the White House this morning. After we get done watching that, I'll give you some more context just so we're on the same page with each other. Then I'll give you my two cents, my deep detail analysis, and then I'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on top. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Thing we've seen in a lot of the, 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 the black community, which is mostly Democrat, is that uh, President Trump's policies are the policies that can help people break out of the problems that they're complaining about, but he can't want them to be successful more than they want to be successful. And what you're seeing throughout the country now is a groundswell of support in the black community because they're realizing that all the different bad things that the media and the Democrats have said about President Trump uh, are not true. And so they're seeing that he's actually uh, delivered, he's put up results, and a lot of people want to get on board to start working with President Trump because they know that. You know, unlike most politicians who have been in Washington for decades who talk and say all the right things, uh, President Trump may not always say the right things, but he does the right things. Um, he says what's on his mind and he gets, uh, he gets results. And so people want results. They're tired of politicians who are promising things and not, not delivering. All right. You saw that. You heard that. Now, I don't see anything that Jared Kushner said there that was racist. As a matter of fact, you could take what he said and apply it to every person on planet Earth every group on planet earth it doesn't really matter you as a person if you want something you have to want it more than the person that's offering it to you that's just a fact okay someone on the outside can't make you want a thing more than they want it for you you gotta take the bull by the horns take control of your life that's just a basic fact now about the black community specifically there's no racism there in the context just so you understand that He's talking about things that are coming from the White House to the black community for the black community. Well, not necessarily just for the black community, but for America as a whole. But a thing that will really help the black community at a disproportionate rate. You're talking about the First Step Act. Now, granted, out of the what 5,000 federal inmates that have been free under the First Step Act, or however many they are, probably more than that. Not everybody is black, but 90 something percent are. So you see what I'm saying? It's not just for us, but it's going to help us more than anybody else. Then you have the HBCUs being funded for an extended period of time rather than they got to come back every single year over and over and keep asking for more money. OK, and Trump funded them at a higher rate. You got the platinum plan in general, 500 billion dollars that's going towards interest of the black community okay you got ice cube coming in with his contract with black america sitting down with the administration and talking about okay what can we do what can you take from my plan to put it into your plan how can i help you how can we help one another help the black community all right so that is a context in which krishna was speaking it's not just a random talk outside the white house and what he said was right on point you have to want it more for yourself than someone else wants it for you now I make kind of a weird comparison here and don't get offended, don't get triggered, but anybody that's dealt with anyone in addiction or if you've been an addict yourself, you know how this whole thing goes. You cannot force a drug addict to go to rehab and to get better. You can't do anything for them, really. Really, if you are helping them and doing things without them wanting to do things for themselves at a certain point, that's called enabling, all right? You're, you're giving them certain things that kind of pacify them all the while the problem that underlines it is not being fixed all right you gotta want to fix that problem for yourself we can incentivize two-parent households we can incentivize entrepreneurship and education and healthy eating and stuff like that but if you don't want to do it it doesn't matter what we do it, it, it's really irrelevant people talking about oh we got food deserts in the hood and we need to have more grocery stores and we got to encourage quote-unquote healthy eating it doesn't matter if those that are living there don't want to do it. And, you know, the problem is that people don't want to, you know, breach that topic. They want to ignore the elephant in the room, which is personal responsibility, personal accountability, and then blame other people. Prime example, going back to this whole thing about healthy eating. You know, I come from low income areas my whole life, and I never had an issue by being able to go to the local store, whether it be Walmart, Foodline or whatever, and getting healthy food. Okay. 
I go in there first of the month, never had food stamps in my life, but I've been broke before. I got $20 to last for the whole week, and I'm not a small guy. I'm six foot three, 215 pounds right now. And I, I've lost weight since I was younger, but different story, I digress. The whole point is that I got 20 bucks to eat for a whole week. And I'm going to the same store that hood folks are going to. First of the month, what you see, cart full up, junk food, ding-dongs, ho-hos, pop-tarts, Kool-Aid, uh, soda, orange drink, grape drink, all that, right? Tostinos, pizza rolls, and it's not even the race thing. You got a lot of black folks to do that, obviously, and that's the context upon which Christian was speaking. But people that don't take responsibility for themselves and their lives will do stuff like that. Meanwhile, I got $20 with no food stamps. I'm in there getting chicken breast and uh, raw kale and stuff like that, rice, and I'm good. Rice in the pot, not even rice aroni or nothing like that. I got to put the rice in the pot and cook it. But I'm, I'm eating and I'm straight. I got cans of beans, all that good stuff. You come to my crib, it's an empty refrigerator, but I'm eating. People got a full refrigerator and they 800 pounds. You know, they don't, they don't see something pound of life. So it's like, all right. You have all the tools you need to succeed. You have the support. You have the money. The government's behind you. You got all kind of nonprofit organizations behind you. You got the church. You got your friends, your family. All of them are behind you, but yet you're still on this rut. Why? It's because you don't want to take personal accountability. You don't want to take the bull by the horns. You don't want to take control of your own life. What Jerry Kushner said was less about race and more about just personal philosophy, personal responsibility and accountability. How can anyone say that that's racist? I think that, that's why I said before, I don't use the R word loosely. I use it against Chelsea Handler by saying, hey, you know what? You're black. That means you can't vote Trump. That's racist. But I'll tell me because I'm a particular skin color that I can't do a certain thing. That's actually racist. All right. And when you put it into law, that is institutional racism. We don't have that going on right now. Well, affirmative action might be, but different story. I move on. I digress. The whole point is that what he said is not racist. It's just a matter of fact. It's a thing that will apply to any person on planet Earth. Okay. The drug addict, if they don't want to go to rehab, if they want to keep banging needles or smoking crack, Hunter Biden, if they want to do whatever they want to do, then you can't stop them. They have to be ready to accept your help. They got to be ready to do things for themselves. They got to hit that rock bottom part of their life where they're like, okay, I've, I've had enough. I'm tired of going to the hospital. I'm tired of OD and I'm tired of almost dying. I'm ready to go ahead and turn my life around. Until that point happens, Nothing that anybody can do will help them. If you got a repeat game banger out there that keeps shooting in occupied dwellings, keep pushing drugs, guns, whatever they got, human trafficking, if they're doing a thing like that, no amount of NGOs, that's non-governmental organizations that get paid from the federal government, local government, but anyway, no amount of NGOs or churches or food banks or nothing, government, nothing's going to help until they're ready to stop doing what they're doing, all right, or until they mess around and die, and unfortunately, as I close, a lot of people that are in these kind of environments in the black community, like low income areas, a lot of them end up dead before they can do anything for themselves. And it's really sad. That is the real problem with the violence in the community. People that don't want to do right. That is a problem, not the white man or the police or anything like that. So when I see all these Black Lives Matter and, you know, all this when I, when I see these marches and these rallies against police brutality, it's like you blaming the wrong person. You pointing your finger in the wrong direction. You're trying to pick this low hanging fruit called, quote unquote, police brutality. You may have a couple of examples of it that are legitimate and they're incorrect and they're wrong. And the officer should get locked up or whatever. And that's fine. But that is not causing all the problems in the community. You're using the police brutality as a scapegoat. You're using allegations of racism as a scapegoat. You're trying to paint. Kushner as a racist to use him as a scapegoat. Oh, I can't get ahead of my life because of racists in the White House. Jerry Kushner. Kushner said absolutely nothing wrong. Not at all. You got to take control of your life. Simple as that. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think that Jerry Kushner is a racist for his comments about the black community? If that's your viewpoint, let me know why in the comments below. And I'm serious about that. I really want to know why you feel that way. But do you think I'm right about what I'm saying? That Kushner is no racist. What he said is just a simple fact. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Puerto Rican, candy stripe. It's irrelevant. 
that same thing he said can be applied to anybody okay you could be a game banger you can just be super obese overweight you could be a drug addict you can be somebody that's just underperforming in society not really doing a whole lot kind of just bumping a log existing in the world you can change your life you can do things to improve your life but you gotta want it more than someone else wants it for you because that someone else can say i'm going to help you i'll give you x y and z but if you aren't prepared to receive it then it won't make a difference but whatever your thoughts are please let me know in the comments below and that's all i gotta say for this video if you like what you heard please comment rate share and subscribe peace